वाचक से कोऑर्डिनेटर से बात नहीं हो पा रही यार पार्टिसिपेंट्स 221 शुड वी स्टार्ट वी आर ऑलरेडी लेट हां यस स्टार्ट प्लीज एंड अल्लाह चलो कौन इनसे हेलो सलामकुम इनसे तो कनेक्ट नहीं हो पा रहा चले मैं स्टार्ट कर लेता हूँ सॉरी फॉर बीइंग लेट ड्यू टू सम टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम सो रहीम माय नेम इज डॉक्टर मोहम्मद हाशिम एंड टुडेज टॉपिक इज वेलर हार्ट डिजीज इन वेलर हार्ट डिजीज वी विल ट्राई टू कवर एटेक वेल्व डिजीज विच इज अ वेरी लॉन्ग टॉपिक so heart valves uh, there are four heart valves uh, you already know that the atrioventricular valve which are present between uh, atria ra and rv and la and lv and uh, valve in great arteries that connects ventricle uh, to the great arteries that is uh, pulmonary valve and tricuspid valve the atrioventricular valve uh works together that is tricuspid and uh, mitral valve opens and closes together while the pulmonary and aortic valve opens and close together so the main function of these valves are to maintain one way blood flow to the heart uh, the blood comes to the heart and goes to uh, comes to the heart from uh, ra and then Uh, it leaves the heart by uh, aorta so it maintains one way blood flow through the heart so as i said uh, the, the uh, you can see on the left of your uh, screen that is uh, the valve which is which are open is a uh, tricuspid and mitral valve these both opens and closes together while anteriorly you can see the pulmonary valve and uh, behind that aortic valve these valves open and closes together the mitral and tricuspid valve opens in diastole while the pulmonary and uh, aortic valve opens in systole so by having these mechanism they uh, maintain one way blood flow through the heart so you can see that the the blood comes this is ra this is rv this is pulmonary artery this, these are pulmonary veins four pulmonary veins two here two here which opens in la this is the left ventricle and this is uh, aortic valve and great artery uh, aorta so the blood comes to the ra from inferior and superior vena cava then fills the rv through tricuspid valve and then it leaves the rv uh, through this uh, pulmonary valve and goes to pulmonary artery it goes to lungs purifies the purifies the uh, blood and comes back to uh, la through pul- these four pulmonary veins two in the right side two in the left side so and then uh, fills the la and from then from la it goes to lv uh, through this uh, mitral valve and from mitral valve then uh, from lv it goes to aorta from uh, bypassing this uh, aortic valve so the function of the heart is uh, to make sure that the blood flow always flow freely in a forward direction and there is no backward leakage so it prevents the backward leakage and it maintains the free forward flow this is these are the uh, function of the heart valves normal heart valves so uh, maintains sorry it maintains uh, forward blood flow and prevents reversal of flow and valves open and closes uh, in response to pressure difference that is gradient between the uh, chambers in cardiac cycle so the in this is the diagram which shows the cardiac cycle uh, when you comes to ward then we will discuss this is a separate topic cardiac cycle by discussing uh, this 
complex graphs uh, we uh, able to learn when the valve open and when the valve closes how it opens and how it closes uh, in the top you can see the charge of uh, pressure differences in different chambers of the heart and uh, while in most lower down you can see the phonogram one thing you must keep in mind that the heart sounds produced by closing of valve closure of valve not opening opening of valves opening of normal valve, uh, valves doesn't uh, <laughs> doesn't make sound so the first heart sound produces by a closure of mitral and tricuspid valve while the second heart sound is produced by closure of aortic and pulmonary valves so we will discuss that uh, in next classes inshallah cardiac cycle then i will try to teach you make you learn this uh, complex beautiful chart so aortic stenosis aortic stenosis uh, this is the topic uh, main topic of our today's talk what it makes it makes unable unable of free forward flow from the ventricular to the aorta so there are three there are three uh, the aortic stenosis can be sub subvalvular that is some stenosis somewhere below the uh, valve uh, or stenosis somewhere above the valve that is supravalvular uh, these are uh, these are the this comes into heading of aortic stenosis but in today's talk due to lack of time has we have to cover aortic regurgitation i will only talk on valvular which is the main topic uh, valvular aortic stenosis so we will go in a systematic way that we will cover in aortic stenosis we will cover etiology pathophysiology clinical presentation and what is the natural history of the aortic valve disease or stenosis then how we assess the severity of the disease and how we can lead to our diagnosis by testing which testing uh, helps us uh, then uh, the modes of treatment that we do have. So aortic valve is a tricuspid valve uh, normally, but uh, it can it can be a unicuspid, which is here, and bicuspid. Uh, in this diagram, you can see that uh, normal valve which opens and closes uh, very sharply, but in a stenotic aortic valve. Yeah, there are dif uh, difficulty in opening and not properly opened and also it doesn't lead to complete closure as well so what are the etiologies the etiology of aortic valve stenosis is uh, being divided uh, as per presentation or age wise in younger population or child uh, children it the mainly cause of aortic stenosis are congenital while in young adult that or middle age the it, it may be due to rheumatic aortic stenosis or bicuspid uh, aortic valve lead to earlier uh, stenosis so calcification and fibrosis of congenital bicuspid aortic valve bicuspid aortic valve uh, stenosis uh, earlier than tricuspid valve so in middle age or elderly population the most common cause of aortic valve stenosis in uh, western world is senile degeneration aortic valve stenosis with the age the aortic valves get uh, sclerosed and then degenerates and get stenosed while in our population the most common is uh, rheumatic aortic valve stenosis and uh, bicuspid aortic valve stenosis so the pathophysiology of aortic uh, valve stenosis that three things occurs valve it is pressure overload condition because there is some obstruction between the uh, left ventricle and the aortic and the aorta so the pressure gets the pressure gets overwhelmed and generated in the left ventricle so uh, due to valve obstruction intravascular pressures increases to maintain uh, cardiac output 
which leads to uh, hypertrophy of the left ventricle. So LVH occurs. Whenever LVH occurs, that decreases the compliance of the heart. The, imp the uh, filling of the heart gets uh, impaired and that increases the preload dependence. So up till some time, this will, up till some time, uh, this will, uh, this uh, hypertrophy compensate the cardiac output, but over the period of, uh, over the period of time, the left ventricular uh, and diastolic pressure get increases, and that leads to ischemia of the heart, because when the left ventricle and diastolic, the left ventricle gets uh, coronary blood flow or its own blood flow uh, in diastole. When in diastole, the pressure of the left ventricle get increases. So there is uh, impairment of its perfusion and that leads to ischemia and progressive, uh, progressive valvular obstruction and increases wall, wall stress that leads to angina, syncope and dyspnea. So ultimately with valve obstruction, we can land to uh, hypertrophy and increase left ventricular uh, and diastolic pressure then lead to angina, syncope or uh, dyspnea and dyspnea. So the cardinal symptoms, as I uh, discussed in the pathophysiology, is the chest pain, syncope, uh, or dyspnea. These three are the cardinal symptoms of aortic stenosis. Uh, we can have, the, if it persists, if it doesn't get intervened, it, it, it leads to LV failure, and we can have a sign of LV failure. On physical examination, uh, on physical examination, we get many signs. But uh, what uh, I emphasize you is that we can get narrow pulse pressure, narrow pulse pressure, slow rising pulse, narrow pulse pressure. These are the signs uh, that we uh, get in aortic valve uh, stenosis uh, and the murmur that we get is ejection systolic murmur that uh, as the flow gets maintained between uh, left ventricle and aorta in systole so the ejection is systolic murmur in aortic stenosis so we get ejection systolic murmur the pulse is narrow pulse pressure and it is slow rising pulse because the blood doesn't get uh, the lv doesn't get empty rapidly due to stenosis common cardiac murmurs the murmurs uh, in cardiology is been divided into uh, two main parts that is systolic murmurs that we get in systole and diastolic murmurs that we get in diastole. So in aortic stenosis, uh, the murmur is pan-systolic that is crescendo, decrescendo murmur that it starts in systole and then get, get its peak and then slowly it gets tapered down. It is a beautiful diamond shaped murmur you can get uh, in uh, aortic stenosis. While in aortic insufficiency, we get decrescendo murmur. That's murmur at the start of diastole it is at its peak and then slowly it gets tapered off. How we can say in uh, our examination that uh, the aortic stenosis is mild, moderate, or severe. That the peaking of murmur intensity, it's not the loudness of the sound that uh, guides us the uh, severity of stenosis, but the peaking. In severe stenosis, this diamond shape, diamond shape uh, murmur gets its peak later in end of the uh, systole while in mild to moderate, the peak gets earlier in systole. The, the later you get uh, your peak of murmur, the severe is the stenosis. So intensity, intensity of the sound doesn't uh, tell us the severity of murmur, but 
uh, presence of thrill does not also predict the severity. But diamond shape, harsh systolic uh, crescendo, decrescendo murmur, it's late peaking, uh, tell us about the severity of uh, murmur. Other things we get in uh, our examination is paradoxical uh, S2. What does paradoxical S2 means that usually in a normal, normal person, uh, the aortic valve, aortic valve gets uh, closed later than uh, the pulmonary valve. While in aortic stenosis, as there is uh, obstruction, the aortic sound, uh, the aortic valve gets uh, closes later than pulmonary valve. So the, the, this is called paradoxical S2. You can get S3 and S4 if sign of if hypertrophy developed or sign of uh, left ventricular failure. What uh, is the natural history? Natural history uh, is guide as when to intervene the disease process or how does uh, it behave it we doesn't intervene uh, the disease so in uh, x axis you can see the ages uh, in years while in x uh, in uh, y axis we can get the survival the aortic stenosis has a long latent period long asymptomatic period and it doesn't uh, much uh, affect the heart uh, once th this is a slow progressing disease once the symptoms developed once the symptoms develop the survival suddenly get reduced if you get the angina the expected survival is up to five or six years if you get the sign of uh, if you get syncope the expected survival is three to four years or if you get sign of failure or dyspnea the expected survival is two two years so at the onset of symptoms the disease should be intervened otherwise the survival is very short so this the in aortic stenosis the uh, symptoms guide us uh, how and when to treat Severity of aortic stenosis, uh, we divided, uh, previously it was uh, classified into a mild, moderate or severe disease, but in recent 2014 AHA ACC guidelines uh, has uh, uh, divided the aortic stenosis severity into progressive, severe or very severe aortic stenosis. In normally there normally there is not any gradient between LV and uh, aortic valve, and the valve area is 2.5 to 3.5 centimeter square. In progressive uh, aortic stenosis, the there are gradients, but the gradient is less than uh, 40 millimeter of mercury. While in severe uh, aortic stenosis, the mean gradient is more than uh, 40 millimeter of mercury while in very severe aortic stenosis the gradient is more than 60 uh, millimeter of mercury well, now the classification has been changed so uh, you should memorize these progressive uh, severe and very severe aortic stenosis diagnostic testing the main diagnostic test in aortic uh, stenosis is uh, which which uh, make us unable that what is the cause of the disease, how it affects uh, the heart, or uh, how much it is, how what is the severity of the disease. So it uh, is eco 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 tell us the severity eco tell us the cause of the aortic valve disease and eco tell us uh, the severity and when to intervene the patient eco also guide us in uh, so eco is the gold standard test for aortic stenosis ecg and x-ray uh, are non-specific non-diagnostic but it can help us in ecg we can get uh, left ventricular hypertrophy or we can get abnormal rhythm that is pvc due to left ventricular hypertrophy AV, apc 
uh, atrial premature beat, ventricular premature beat, non-sustained VT, we can get an ECG there. While in chest X-ray, we can get uh, in in large cardiac select or widening of mediastinum due to left ventricular hypertrophy. We hardly uh, really need other tests, but when there is ambiguity between the clinical presentation and the echo uh, or the sign and symptoms or the echo, then we need further tests to confirm our diagnosis or the CT scan, MRI or cardiac uh, catheterization that help us out when there is any ambiguity between our, uh, the clinical presentation of the patient and the echocardiography. But these are hardly needed. In echo, we can lead to our diagnosis and that is the gold standard test for aortic dystinosis. As I uh, said previously, what uh, a good test need uh, to have, it should tell you the diagnosis. It should, uh, it should tell you the etiology. It should tell you how much it affects uh, the organs or the body or the heart. And the third thing, how much it is mild, moderate or severe and when need to be treated. So all questions are answered by uh, echocardiogram. It tells us about the etiology, valve area and gradient, how much left ventricular uh, hypertrophy is there, what is the systolic function of the heart, what is the diastolic function of the heart, what is the LA size, concomitant any regional wall motion abnormalities due to ischemia or angina or um, any uh, associated diseases, uh, especially with bicuspid aortic valve, there are evidences of aortopathy. So, coagulation of aorta, it also tells us uh, the disease of aorta as well. So, treatment. Uh, previously, uh, it has been uh, thought that uh, statin decreases uh, or uh, stops or decreases the progression of aortic disease. But a uh, recent, trial, recent trial have been shown that there is no benefits of statin uh, to decrease the uh, progression of aortic disease. So basically, it is anatomical disease that need to be fixed surgically or percutaneously. There is no medical treatment for aortic stenosis. But uh, we can treat the concomitant disease. If the patient have uh, hypertension, we can treat that hypertension. If the patient has uh, uh, failure signs, so we can treat medically the failure with diuretics. But uh, there is nothing uh, in medical treatment which uh, uh, decelerates or stops the disease progression. So what modes of treatment we do have, we have uh, surgical or percutaneously. Uh, surgical aortic valve uh, replacement is class one indication in patient with symptomatic severe aortic valve stenosis. Or in some conditions, we can uh, have percutaneous balloon, uh, balloon aortic valvuloplasty. Uh, especially in children and young adults, bridge to operation who has, who has very severe aortic stenosis, but uh, yet yeah, they have uh, to wait for their operations for that, and for that we uh, just give palliative treatment of aortic uh, valvuloplasty, and then uh, after some time we lead to operation surgery. The why this balloon valvuloplasty is not a perfect treatment? Because the rate of re stenosis is very high. Once you uh, balloon valvuloplasty, the patient then within a six month of a period, uh, patient again gets severe aortic stenosis. So this treatment doesn't uh, fit. And the other thing is there are chances of AR, acute AR, the valve get. Uh, here and uh, you you can lead to other another uh, disease which then need to be treated. The other treatment from law in last decade, uh, which is uh, very famous uh, right now and started in Pakistan as well, that is percutaneous aortic valve uh, replacement, which is. Uh, 
popular with the name of Tawi or uh, Tavar. Uh, in Pakistan, it had this treatment has uh, started in 2000, back in 2018, 18, yes, 18. So if you have any questions uh, in regard to aortic stenosis, I can answer you or we should. Uh, or I should take your questions. If you have any questions, you can ask me here uh, regarding uh, aortic stenosis. So then we can, uh, or we can s switch gear for aortic regurgitation. Yes, uh, paradoxical S2 is usually the aortic valve um, as I told in previous uh, slides, that aortic and aortic and uh, pulmonary valve closes simultaneously, but there is mile, milli, milliseconds of differences in between these two. So, uh, when usually the aortic valve closes uh, after pulmonary valve closure. What happens in a aortic stenosis that there is obstruction in a left ventricular flow, so it gets closer. It gets closes after uh, pulmonary valve closure. So this is called paradoxical S2. I hope the question is answered. What is the difference between surgical and percutaneous? Surgical is uh, the surgical mode of treatment is you do thoracotomy and patient go into bypass machine, lung heart bypass machine and percutaneous treatment means there is, we do a pinhole. It's a pinhole operation. We just pass a cannula in femoral artery and go there, uh, implant the valve and come back. This is a hardly 20 or 50 or 15 minutes procedure we will discuss the clinical signs all the clinical signs in the ward it is better you won't get uh, understand here uh, it's better to uh, do clinical signs in the ward so things will be easy if you have any other questions should we switch gears Let's start then, uh, uh, let's start aortic regurgitation, our next topic, then we will take your questions, inshallah. Aortic valve regurgitation. What is aortic valve regurgitation? It is the leakage. It is the failure of aortic valve to close it tightly. Uh, causes backflow of blood into the left ventricle. The aortic valve doesn't get closes properly, so the blood which goes to the heart, goes to the uh, great artery in systole, come back to left ventricle uh, in diastole. You can see this is the diastole. In diastole, the uh, Mitral and pulmonary, the mitral and tricuspid valve opens while the aortic and pulmonary valve closes. But in aortic valve stenosis, this 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 is not properly closed, so the blood from the aorta comes to ventricle. Same, we will discuss uh, etiology, pathophysiology, clinical presentation, natural history, diagnostic testing, and treatment. Aortic valve etiology, uh, the etiology can be valve, the cause of etiology can be valve uh, abnormality or aortic uh, root abnormality. In uh, aortic uh, leaflet abnormality, we do have rheumatic, art, uh, rheumatic heart disease, infective endocarditis or congenital degenerative disease. While in aortic root disease, uh, we do have aortic dissection uh, connective tissue disease that is morphons or other disease uh, aortitis these are the uh, two different etiology for uh, aortic valve regurgitation 
the aortic valve uh, the regurgitant disease is also been classified into acute and chronic but uh, we will discuss here only the uh, chronic uh, acute regurgitation in chronic aortic regurgitation uh, the pathophysiology of chronic aortic regurgitation that the blood leaks back to the LV. So it after it goes from the uh, LV, it comes back to the LV, increases the LV volume, increases the stroke volume. Has it doesn't stay in the great artery. It comes in, it comes back to the LV. The diastolic pressure the diastolic blood pressure decreases. So as the blood as the heart gets its own blood supply in diastole the diastolic blood pressure falls, it can lead to myocardial ischemia. Due to increased LV volume, the increase, the, the, there is increased LV mass. When the LV mass increases, the demand for oxygen also increases, but the supply is low, that leads to myocardial ischemia. Due to increased uh, stroke, due to increased stroke volume, the systolic blood pressure can raise in this while the when the systolic blood pressure gets that also lead to myocardial ischemia other signs other uh, pathogenesis of uh, aortic regurgitation is that due to increased volume it leads to lv dysfunction and lv failure so so we can have angina we can have sign of failure we can have dyspnea in aortic valve uh, regurgitation so the symptoms or the clinical presentation in aortic uh, regurgitation is dyspnea due to LV failure or we can have angina, chest pain and fatigue, easy, uh, easy fatigability and palpitations due to increase uh, LV mass or dilatation of the heart. Uh, this may be a focus for arrhythmia. Patient may present with VT or SVT due to this or sinus tachycardia due to failure so palpitation is one of the presentation or signs symptoms of aortic regurgitation there are many signs you can get in a physical examination of ar but the most all of them are due to this white pulse pressure due to while pulse pressure there is hyperdynamic circulation and you can get all the other signs. There are more than 10, 12 uh, signs of uh, aortic regurgitation. Uh, other thing that you get is diastolic murmur, which I show you that decrescendo murmur. The murmur at initial uh, beginning of diastole it's, is at its peak. Then over the period of time, it gets uh, decreases. So decrescendo murmur, you can get decrescendo murmur and white pulse pressure. The apex beat gets uh, laterally displaced due to uh, LV hypertrophy or LV dilatation. These three signs are commonly uh, present in patient with severe aortic uh, regurgitation. While there are many other signs, these all are due to uh, increase hyperdynamic, hyperdynamic circulation. And due to hyperdynamic circulation, we can get all these signs. We will discuss these all signs while you come to ward in your in your clinical uh, rotations. What is the natural history? The natural history uh, same like your take uh, stenosis. There is a long play to asymptomatic state in aortic uh, regurgitation as well. Onset of severe AR, sorry, it is um, AR, then progressively LV dilatation, then LV dysfunction. Once LV dysfunction, once the LV dysfunction is there, then uh, after LV dysfunction, you can get the symptoms. Before that, there is long severe, you can see that severe onset of uh, AR, and there is asymptomatic phase, play to asymptomatic phase. Once the LV gets uh, failed, then you can get onset of symptoms. So the patient should be treated before the onset of symptoms, uh, before the onset of symptoms, because 
once the symptoms is there, the already the uh, prognosis is very poor and LV dysfunction has started. Same like uh, aortic stenosis in regurgitant ecotellus, the etiology, ecotellus, how much it is, mild, moderate, or severe. And eco will tell us uh, how does it affect the heart. Uh, the failure is mild, moderate, or severe, or how much hypertrophy is there. The other two, that is ECG and chest X-ray, uh, will uh, have non-specific findings in aortic regurgitation. Really, we do have these fancy tests to uh, whenever we have ambiguity between clinical presentation and echo. So echocardiography uh, tell us all these things. Uh, yeah, topic, topic is so long, the topic is so long, the time is so long. So, uh, echocardiogram uh, will, sh will give us all these things which have been discussed in uh, aortic stenosis. So, previously it was thought that uh, the vasodilate, vasodilator uh, is helpful uh, to decrease the progression of uh, aortic regurgitation. But recent trials and data have been shown that there is no benefits of vasodilator in pure aortic regurgitation. It doesn't decelerate or stops the progression of the disease. So you can use uh, the vasodilators uh, if the patient have concomitant other disease, that is blood pressure or failure, you can use, but it doesn't have to do anything with uh, the stopping or uh, deceleration of uh, progression of disease. Treatment, treatment mode, uh, as I said, that this is anatomical disease, aortic regurgitation and aortic uh, stenosis. It is anatomical disease. So uh, we don't have medical treatment for that. It, it has to be surgically treated. If the cause of the disease is purely uh, aortic valve leaflet, so the uh, choice of uh, treatment is aortic valve, surgical aortic valve uh, replacement. Or uh, if there, uh, the, the disease uh, is due to aortic root, as you can see in this uh, diagram or in this picture, the aortic root is dilated. So the choice of treatment is replacing the root of aorta as well as the valve. So this procedure is called Bental's procedure. Thank you very much. If you have any questions now, then uh, you can type your questions. I will try to. Answer your questions. What is the difference between surgical and percutaneous? Uh, percutaneous treatment is pinhole uh, surgery. Most of the time, you don't need uh, anesthesia in this, and the recovery is very fast. Mortality is very low. And the percutaneous treatment is offered for patients uh, who has high surgical risk. Otherwise, uh, the gold standard is treatment is... Uh, for aortic stenosis, uh, is surgical aortic valve replacement. Hello. Okay, Allah is take care.